have a super cool one today because I've been doing this shattered glass effect for years and it's just always so fun to do. If you don't know me, I'm Abby Sparza and I've been doing photo manipulation for about 10 years now. And as always, you can get all the resources that feature today over on Envato Elements, get unlimited downloads of graphics, photos, and fonts, all with super simple commercial licensing. A plus, a no locking contract means you can cancel anytime. Go ahead and subscribe now with the link down in the description. Now, I already went ahead and uh, just made a super simple studio background. Just a colorful layer with some noise and a uh, vignette-like lighting. I love a studio background, but you can use any environment, it's up to you. I also extracted my subject, just using a select subject and a bit of select and mask. Then I did some very quick lighting that we can go through real quickly here. Starting with a brightness contrast adjustment, I used a smart filter because I love a smart object, but you can also use adjustment layers just as easily. Then an inner shadow layer effect, just for some quick rim light, ironically. And then I added a bit of bounce light with an inner glow effect. The subject really isn't the focus here, uh, so as far as the tutorial goes at least, I don't want to overly focus on her. What I really want to start on is that glass effect. The key here is to have a nice big broken glass texture. Something flat with a lot of broken glass pieces of varying sizes. So let's create and clip a black and white gradient map to convert the texture to a black and white and give it a hint of added contrast. And then we can set that texture to screen. At this point you want to uh, decide if you want more or less contrast. You can do that using a uh, brightness contrast curves, levels, whatever your preferred method is. Once it's looking good, we want to make sure all of its effects are flattened and rasterized. Because now we're going to individually cut out the shards of glass using the magnetic lasso tool. Your settings will vary, but I found a width of five pixels, a contrast of 10%, and a frequency of 57 uh, to work pretty well. It's gonna change though, depending on your specific texture. But let's hide the model group. So all we see is that glass texture. And we wanna find a good looking section of glass and then drag the lasso tool around it to select it. Looking good. Now edit, copy, edit, paste. It should paste as a new layer. We really want to make sure all of our pieces of glass are on their own separate layers so we can easily arrange them later on. I also highly suggest using shortcuts for edit, copy, and edit, paste, as we're going to do this as much as our patients will allow. We want tons of glass pieces, all in varying shapes and sizes. The more you make, the better the end effect will be. So try and just, you know, zen out and enjoy the process, if possible. We can copy and reuse some of these glass shards later on, but repetitive details are always a big no-no in photo manipulation. They really stick out like a sore thumb. Now, if you find your glass shards aren't varied enough from using that one stock texture, you can absolutely bring in more. Just as long as the glass pieces look consistent, you're going to be golden. Once we have all of our glass, we want to unhide the subject and then hide the master glass texture. Don't delete it just in case you need to grab some more glass pieces later on. Now we want to arrange the glass shards in a way that flows nicely with the subject. I'm going to go in a diagonal line starting from the top left corner of the canvas to the bottom right corner. And you're going to want to flip, rotate, and resize the shards as you go. We're just kind of placing them in a nice flow. We do want things to flow naturally with a mix of varying tiny pieces of glass and larger pieces, like statement pieces almost. Sometimes it's easier to place the bigger ones and then build off of those, but just go with whatever feels right. Like I said, you can always duplicate, flip, resize, and rotate some of those glass shards to fill any empty spots if you run out of glass pieces. 
However, you just don't want it to look like you have a lot of repeating or copied glass pieces. You can even mask those pieces to change their shape and add more variation. You can also just mask any glass pieces to fit better and flow with their surrounding pieces. It's kind of like building an imperfect puzzle. You really want to spend a lot of time here. The flow and design of your glass will eventually become a major pain to change later down the line, so really try and perfect it now. But I think this looks perfectly fine for the tutorial at least, so let's keep on rolling. Go ahead and group all of those glass layers together and name that group glass, setting it to screen. Now let's copy the glass group, place it below the original, and then merge. We're going to use this flattened version of our glass design to add a tint of color to the glass. So let's add a color overlay layer style and fill it with a dark purple. And then set the opacity to 70%. That'll make the glass less transparent and give it a tint of color. Completely optional and definitely customizable. You can play with not only the color, but of course the layer mode as well. But let's start to focus on giving the glass a bit more of a dynamic and maybe thicker look. We want to add some harsher white edges to a few of the more significant pieces. Create a new layer and clip it into the glass group. I'm going to keep it set to normal, but you can also experiment with overlay or soft light for a more, you know, a subtle effect. And with a small hard brush, we're going to paint white on just some of the glass edges. Not all. Look at the already existing white lines in the cracked glass here. That is what we're replicating. You want to make sure it doesn't look too perfect or like a solid stroke effect. Think of it this way. If the edge of glass is leaning towards you, the viewer, then that edge would appear thicker and catch the light while pieces leaning inward and away from the viewer, uh, they would appear thinner and you wouldn't see the reflection of its edge at that angle at least. We'll also create another new layer and clip it, setting the layer to 50%. You can always come back and decrease or increase the opacity of this layer. And on this layer with a very large soft round brush, all you're going to do is paint white on the shards of glass that again would be catching more light due to their angle or position. And we're going to repeat that step one more time, finishing things off with a new clipped layer set to overlay this time, and then using a soft round brush with a very low flow of 5% or possibly even less, a paint high points of white and low points of black. Again, we're thinking angles. We started with flat pieces of glass, so this is all adding in some dimension. You don't have to be precise here. Broken glass is already a bit chaotic, right? And can be pretty forgiving with the lighting. So once you're happy, go ahead and just group all of the glass layers together in a new group named large or main glass. Okay, now let's return to our intact glass group and duplicate some of the smaller glass shard layers. We're going to bring these duplicated layers above the model and arrange them around the model's legs and body, just to give the effect that there are at least some glass pieces both in front and behind her.
Once you're done, group those layers together and name the group small glass. We're trying to keep things nice and tidy. All these glass layers can become a lot to deal with if not contained in groups. If you really go all out on this effect, you can easily have over 100 layers of just those, you know, tiny little glass pieces. It can get real confusing real quick. Let's finish up the glass by adding some dust and glass particles. Grab any debris or particle brush. You can also find glass piece brush sets, which would work perfectly here, of course. Or you can use a default round brush with varying scatters and jitters applied. Here are my brush settings that I like to use when I'm doing this effect, though a solid particle brush will work probably a bit better. And we're just going to add these little trails of broken pieces coming from the larger pieces of glass and focusing on the areas where they're kind of breaking apart from each other. Just keeping the flow of things in mind. This is really to sell the effect that they are shattering apart. And on another new layer, we're going to do the same thing or try to get the same effect by adding in some soft dust-like trails. Very light, nothing too dramatic. We don't want it to look like smoke or anything like that. We just want to reinforce the movement of the glass. This will make things seem a bit more dynamic, uh, which fog or smoke is always good for. It's a good cheat. And the final, final step, which is entirely optional, but super fun. On a new layer set to screen, use the pen tool to create a path on all the thicker glass edges, which is any place you added that thick white line to. And then let's go into the brush tool and set it to a small soft round brush. And the color to a pale blue. Return to the pen tool and right click stroke path. Set the tool to brush and make sure simulate pressure is checked or else this won't really work out too well. And this will add a glowing line everywhere you placed a path. If you want to intensify that shine or glow, then we can create another new layer. Select the brush tool again, but make it smaller. And set the color to a white. And then let's go back to the layer we just created and right click stroke path. This will create a soft white line to help make the glow seem a bit more intense and help blend it into the edge of that glass. But this looks good, so let's right click delete path to get rid of those paths. And then for extra funsies, let's add some light flares to a few of the pieces. I love a six point star, but you can use any shine effect, including just a soft light bloom. And I lied because I completely forgot we have to add the reflection of our model in the glass behind her because that totally makes sense. Real quick, let's duplicate the model group and merge that group, giving us a flattened version of the model. Then we can bring that layer down above our large glass group and clip it in. 
Set the layer to lighten with a 60% opacity, give or take. It depends how harsh you want these reflections to be. Because this will be the base of our reflection. We want to move this reflection around uh, to look like it's reflecting the back of our subject, which is a bit hard since this is a copied version of the front of our subject. So we need to make sure no obvious front details are showing. Things like the face, the front of the hands, just any obvious detail that gives away that this is indeed the front of the subject. You can absolutely copy, warp, or resize this reflection. Reflections in glass are commonly distorted, so it really just adds to the effect. And adding at least a bit of reflection will really help sell the idea that the glass is pointing at different angles, and so she's reflecting at different angles. Basically, just embrace the chaos here. I do have a color grade already whipped up for this. You can see the exact settings in the written version that will be linked down in the description, but here's a quick flip through. And that's my go-to technique for an edgy shattered glass effect. You can use it to create more practical effects as well, for sure, but I'm a portrait type gal myself. That's going to do it for today. If that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer? There's tons. If you like this video, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and of course, tutorials. Happy designing. See you next time.